on the bestowing virtue. When Zarathustra had taken leave of the city, which was dear to his heart and whose name was the motley cow, many who called themselves his disciples followed him. And they provided him escort. Thus they came to a crossroads. Then Zarathustra told them he wanted to walk alone now, for he was a friend of walking alone. In parting, however, his disciples presented him with a staff upon whose golden knob a snake encircled the sun. Zarathustra was delighted with the staff and leaned on it, then he spoke thus to his disciples. Tell me now, how did gold come to have the highest value? Because it is uncommon and useless and gleaming and mild in its luster, it bestows itself always. Only as the image of the highest virtue did gold come to have the highest value. Gold like gleams the gaze of the bestower. Golden luster makes peace between moon and sun. Uncommon is the highest virtue and useless, it is gleaming and mild in its luster. A bestowing virtue is the highest virtue. Truly. I guess you well, my disciples. Like me you strive for the bestowing virtue. What would you have in common with cats or wolves? This is your thirst. To become sacrifices and gifts yourselves. And therefore you thirst to amass all riches in your soul. Insatiably your soul strives for treasures and gems, because your virtue is insatiable in wanting to bestow. You compel all things to and into yourselves, so that they may gush back from your well as the gifts of your love. Indeed, such a bestowing love must become a robber of all values. But hail and holy I call this selfishness. There is another selfishness, one all too poor, a hungering one that always wants to steal. That selfishness of the sick, the sick selfishness. With the eye of the thief it looks at all that gleams, with the greed of hunger it eyes those with ample food, and always it creeps around the table of the bestowers. Sickness speaks out of such craving and invisible degeneration, the thieving greed of this selfishness speaks of a diseased body. Tell me, my brothers, what do we regard as bad and worst? Is it not degeneration? And we always diagnose degeneration where the bestowing soul is absent. Upward goes our way. Over from genus to super genus. But a horror to us is the degenerating sense which speaks, everything for me. Upward flies our sense. Thus it is a parable of our body, a parable of elevation. Such elevation parables are the names of the virtues. Thus the body goes through history, becoming and fighting. And the spirit? What is it to the body? The herald of its fights and victories. Companion and echo. Parables are all names of good and evil. They do not express, they only hint. A fool who wants to know of them. Pay attention, my brothers. To every hour where your spirit wants to speak in parables. There is the origin of your virtue. There your body is elevated and resurrected. With its bliss it delights the spirit. Which becomes creator and esteemer and lover and benefactor of all things. When your heart flows broad and full like a river, a blessing and a danger to adjacent dwellers. There is the origin of your virtue. When you are sublimely above praise and blame, and your will wants to command all things, as the will of a lover, there is the origin of your virtue. When you despise pleasantness and the soft bed, and cannot bed down far enough away from the softies, there is the origin of your virtue. When you are the ones who will with a single will, and this turning point of all need points to your necessity, there is the origin of your virtue. Indeed, it is a new good and evil. Indeed, a new, deep rushing and the voice of a new spring. It is power, this new virtue. It is a ruling thought and around it a wise soul, a golden sun and around it the snake of knowledge. Here Zarathustra was silent for a while and looked with love at his disciples.
Then he continued to speak thus, and his voice had transformed. Remain faithful to the earth, my brothers. With the power of your virtue. Let your bestowing love and your knowledge serve the meaning of the earth. Thus I beg and beseech you. Do not let it fly away from earthly things and beat against eternal walls with its wings. Oh! There has always been so much virtue that flew away. Like me. Guide the virtue that has flown away back to the earth, yes, back to the body and life, so that it may give the earth its meaning, a human meaning. In a hundred ways thus far the spirit as well as virtue has flown away and failed. Oh! In our body now all this delusion and failure dwells, there they have become body and will. In a hundred ways thus far spirit as well as virtue has essayed and erred. Indeed, human beings were an experiment. Alas! Much ignorance and error have become embodied in us. Not only the reason of millennia, their madness too breaks out in us. It is dangerous to be an heir. Still we struggle step by step with the giant called accident, and over all humanity thus far nonsense has ruled, the senseless. Let your spirit and your virtue serve the meaning of the earth. My brothers, and the value of all things will be posited newly by you. Therefore you shall be fighters. Therefore you shall be creators. Knowingly the body purifies itself. Experimenting with knowledge it elevates itself. All instincts become sacred in the seeker of knowledge. The soul of the elevated one becomes gay. Physician. Help yourself. Thus also you help your sick. Let that be his best help, that he sees with his own eyes the one who heals himself. There are a thousand paths that have never yet been walked. A thousand healths and hidden islands of life. Human being and human earth are still unexhausted and undiscovered. Wake and listen, you lonely ones. From the future come winds with secretive wingbeats. Good tidings are issued to delicate ears. You lonely of today, you withdrawing ones, one day you shall be a people. From you who have chosen yourselves a chosen people shall grow, and from them the overman. Indeed, the earth shall yet become a site of recovery. And already a new fragrance lies about it. Salubrious, and a new hope. When Zarathustra had said these words, he grew silent like one who has not spoken his last word. Long he weighed the staff in his hand, doubtfully. Finally he spoke thus. And his voice had transformed. Alone I go now, my disciples. You also should go now, and alone. Thus I want it. Indeed, I counsel you to go away from me and guard yourselves against Zarathustra. And even better, be ashamed of him. Perhaps he deceived you. The person of knowledge must not only be able to love his enemies, but to hate his friends too. One repays a teacher badly if one always remains a pupil only. And why would you not want to pluck at my wreath? You revere me. But what if your reverence falls down some day? Beware that you are not killed by a statue. You say you believe in Zarathustra. But what matters Zarathustra? You are my believers, but what matter all believers? You had not yet sought yourselves. Then you found me. All believers do this. That's why all faith amounts to so little. Now I bid you lose me and find yourselves, and only when you have all denied me will I return to you. Indeed, with different eyes, my brothers, will I then seek my lost ones, with a different love will I love you then. And one day again you shall become my friends and children of a single hope. Then I shall be with you a third time to celebrate the great noon with you. And that is the great noon. Where human beings stand at the midpoint of their course between animal and overman and celebrate their way to evening as their highest hope, for it is the way to a new morning. 
then the one who goes under will bless himself, that he is one who crosses over, and the sun of his knowledge will stand at noon for him. Dead are all gods. Now we want the overman to live. Let this be our last will at the great noon. Thus spoke Zarathustra.